Okay, here it is. The file server kicks up, spiffs kicks up. It shows you the SSID and password. And it kind of quickly shifts to this other screen. Um, what we were seeing initially was you saw an IP address of 10.1.1.1. That is the access points IP address. That's what you would connect to. And when you connect to it, you get an IP address on the 10.1.1 network. Um, I also turned on the Wi-Fi so it'll connect to my home network, is, which is the 172.16 network. So it runs a web server, um, a kind of DNS server of a sort. And um, it's kind of cool too, because this will also run HTTPS. Now we're using a self-signed cert, so that causes some delays because it's erroring out because it can't talk to the cert authority. But why don't we take a look at what it looks like when you web browse to this and the cool stuff you can do. There's actually some, it, it's really neat. So uh, let's check it out. Okay, so here we are. The first step is to connect to the ESP32 running the web server. The web server it happens to be called PS5 underscore web AP. So we're gonna tap on it. And um, it has a password. Um, the password is actually set to password and that flashed by the screen. I um, had already entered it. So it's not asking us this time, but we are now connected to it. And if we now go to a browser, and remember we wanna to go to, so first we're gonna to go to HTTP uh, colon slash slash 10.1.1.1 admin.html. And here we are. And right off the bat, it shows us some really nice stuff here. I'm gonna zoom in a little. So it's gonna show the software, the firmware version, that's in the code, you can change that. SDK version. Okay, here's the board we're using. It's an ESP32 S2 with a TFT. Shows the frequency, the cores, shows how much memory. Now here's the SPIFS um, file system about halfway down under storage information. That's, um, I don't have an SD card in this. If you do have an SD card in the code, you can enable that and then you can actually store a lot more data. As you can see, we have some used space and I'll show you what I've uploaded. Also shows PS RAM and other RAM and some the sketch information of how how large it is, which is really cool, right? So if we go down to the next um, page file manager, the next tab, I've uploaded boards.txt and boards32-info, uh, just throwing up some text files. You can download them from here. You can even tap on them and see them. Um, so if we tap it, look at that, here's the contents of the file. Now there's also this file uploader. So file uploader, here's where you upload files. Firmware update, this is where you can update the code on your ESP32 remotely. Remember this is from the web page. Now config editor, this is kind of cool. So here's the access point IP information up top and then the Wi-Fi connection, which I have on. You can turn that off. You really don't need that on. And one of the cool parts I think about this is you could go to say somebody's house and just turn this on. You don't need to know their Wi-Fi password or anything. Have them connect and they can download files. Um, maybe a decent use case for this because it seems kind of like, well, why wouldn't you just put a file up on a Google Drive or something like that, you know? Sure. Uh, maybe, maybe you have Wi-Fi connectivity issues. Maybe it's highly secure. Um, maybe you're teaching a class in some remote area or at a hotel and the Wi-Fi goes out and you need to give your students, the lab documentation and your code. I know I'm kind of reaching, but it's really cool. And I think there's a lot of applications. Um, and then uh, there's some storage format information. This will delete everything. And then this is really cool. It will reboot the uh, ESP. And that's kind of nice to do it remotely in case you have it mounted somewhere that's not just the easiest to unplug and plug in. Um, so it's pretty slick. Now, one other thing that I got working um, now, the code is actually really good. I did not write the, this code. Um, I did, I paused for a second, because I made a couple mini alterations. This code was written by someone called Stooged, and I have a link to it in um, the code, and I'll put a link to it uh, in the description. So it's really well-written code. I had to do some fiddling to get the HTTPS to work. It's slow, and that's because um, it's a self-signed cert, which is generated using uh, the, the name of the ESP that you're giving it, the um, string name and some other data. So as you'll see, we are connected. See the little lock there? Here, let me go back. So there's a little lock, we're connected. It, it's, you know, encrypted, which is really cool, I think. Um, uploading and downloading, like I said, is slow because it errors on the handshake because the client 
can't talk to the cert authority to validate this cert. It's self-signed, it's kind of fake. I did accept it, hence why we're able to browse to it. You have to say, you know, continue on. You've probably seen that. You know, continue on, warning, this isn't a valid cert. Um, that's fine in this situation. And I think a lot of people would argue, do you really even need it? Maybe not in this scenario, but I think it's, it could be useful in other instances. So, but um, yeah, I mean, you can, you can click around and still get to everything and it stays secure. Notice how with each link, it's, it's secure still. So really cool stuff. Um, I think this would be a great um, component to another uh, script or you know, more code. I think it's really, really cool. Well, I wanted to show you, I'm not gonna go through the code. It's, it's very long. But I did want to show you the serial monitor. I'm going to kind of reboot the ESP. It's right in front of me. I just pushed the power button. So notice we lost connectivity. And we're connecting with this uh, 115,200 baud rate. So here goes the, the Wi-Fi IP starts. DNS server starts. Um, I showed you the TFTP, the TFT, excuse me, screen. Uh, this is serial output here. So it says it started. Not a ton of output, but I'm going to connect to it. And so I'm connecting with my phone and notice here it says new connection, uh, detected, new socket, SSL except failed, aborting handshake. That is because of the self-signed cert. Notice how it repeats and repeats. However, I still am able to connect to it. Those are more warnings rather than hard fails, but you're gonna see a bunch more because I just connected via HBS. But look, it did a request, it did a get for the style.css. It was successful. But all these errors really slow things down. I just wanted to kind of show you how important, I guess, the serial output is and um, how you can kind of track down the different errors and figure out what's going on. It's very useful. Um, so, yeah, check it out.